Welcome to another Sofa Safari. My name is Civilized Standard Tula Safari Camp. So uh, this afternoon it's my debut. Debut I means this is my first time and <laughs> doing a uh, Sofa Safari. So this afternoon we're gonna be going to follow up on the vultures that we have seen them circling around close to, to camp. So we're gonna go into that particular area and see what might have happened and then definitely will let you know and you can see what is happening. I thank you. Circling, we can see some that um, are landing, so that's where we're gonna start climbing in to the bush and then we do off roading and then we we'll see what's happening because definitely something is happening because now we can see the vultures are coming down to the ground and now we are going into the, the direction where we saw the vultures going down to the ground. Alright guys, so we have arrived into the area where we saw the vultures circling and coming down to the ground to the ground and now we have find a dead giraffe. So definitely we don't know what is the cause of the death because there's no sign of any fight in the area. We had um, a four day a heat wave in the area which maybe it might be an impact but that I'm not going to rule on that and we can rule that they have died from natural cause. So only vultures that we can see that are feeding on this um, uh, 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 giraffe. And we've got um, uh, uh, the, the white back vultures and some few cape vultures, which cape vultures are not common to see in this area. The most common one are the white backed vultures. So now as we arrive, they've moved away from the carcass and then they are waiting. We're going to sit and let them come back and they will feed again. Mm, the yeah, cave vultures are endangered. And also because um, they are not like um, the white bag which they um, a nest in the trees. They're more like to mountain cliff areas. That's where they nest. So where would they have a nest around here? Yeah. yeah, also you're looking at um, on those uh, mountains and cliffs, Blade Canyon area, Mohuluhulu, Dragonspeck which is quite more the area where we've got all those um, cliff and mountains. So would it fly like all the way here from there? Yes, 
they can fly all the way to, 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 to here because as they circle around, which are vultures, they can have a very good eyesight such that they can see quite a distance away. As they catch the thermal, they can able to see what is happening. And also as they see other vultures flying in a certain direction, and then with vultures, they will often fly towards that direction to investigate what is happening. Ah, those sharp, big, designed to cut and wrap all those meat. Yeah. Old head that will help them as they don't get too much blood on their head when they're feeding and getting their head into the carcass. So we have seen what the vultures were second for with that um, giraffe. So definitely it was only vultures that were there feeding and we're going to come back later to follow up if there will be other predators like hyenas and see if there will be more activity other than the one for the uh, vultures. Alright guys, we're gonna continue with our um, safari and then hope we follow up on the, the, uh, on the leopard that we have been spotted um, this morning. So yeah, let's continue. Alright, we've got a beautiful Motelia eagle, which is one of our snake eagle, which are uh, with all our snake eagles, they are scaled on their toes whereby the other eagles, they are feathered all the way to their toes. We say there's a true eagle, but they never told that there's a false, a false eagle. So, <laughs> eagles, they kind of like wearing boots. And with all the snake eagles, they are scaled to protect themselves against venomous snakes. And Batalia eagle, they pair for life, which is quite hard to differentiate between the male and the female when they are sitting, only on flight, whereby the female have got um, a, a broad white under their wings with a very narrow black at the end of the wings, which male have got both broad white and black under their wings. So that is the only way that you can differentiate between the male Batalia and the female, only on flight. Juvenile are brown in color, which adult you have got that orange, big orange feet with that um, golden brown on their back. Alright guys, here we've got uh, one of the popular tree, which is found down in the low field, in the bush field. So this is what we call the marula, marula tree, which is quite popular for the Lequia Amarula, Lequia, that's where the fruits made that um, favorite drinks. So as you can see around it, they've got um, a wire that they've been uh, put around. So this is part of the conservation, try to protect these three species because uh, Marula tree is one of our protected species in the bush. Protecting them from elephant because elephant as you can see this year have been already damaged in which elephant they pluck their tusk and they remove the bark and once the tree is ring barked definitely the tree is going, is going to die. So by doing this is to protect this tree species. Okay so this time definitely I've got some flowers that we might not able to see but it's flowering which come um, uh, December January that's when it's gonna have some fruit so I like to share the traditional belief with this tree with the local uh, uh, people in this area which this tree is believed to be used to communicate with their ancestors. So what happened, how we communicate with our ancestors, what you're gonna need, it's more when you like to celebrate 
or if you like to introduce a new member of the family or a newborn baby or if there's a ceremony to celebrate our ancestors so what we do we prepare the traditional beer which is made up of soft uh, porridge put yeast it ferments for about two to three days and then after five days it's ready which we normally do that on weekend so what happened once we communicate with ancestors right at the edge of the uh, of the uh, of the tree we're gonna draw a cross and then we pour the beer so the beer will actually flow uh, we, uh, we, with the cross as we put the snare of tobacco and then we start cutting for our ancestors that have passed on to introduce a new member of the family and also to, to, to remember them so most of the local people will have this tree in their yard that they use to communicate with their ancestors other than communicating with their ancestors the fruits of this tree the local people or we made we make amarula beer which we collect the fruits squeeze the juice add the water and then we leave it for about three to four days and then it ferment itself and then after three or four days and then the beer is ready to be consumed and then also the color it's kind of like yellowish in color which local people during the, the harvesting time of the fruits you'll find them on the street selling that amarula beer which is quite very productive and consumed during that period which is start from um, uh, december up to march so that's our um, our marula tree so it's not very it's not only important for the elephants which elephant they like the fruits and also they like the bark because the bark of this tree is quite very very soft such that the elephant if you can see i just want to show you something inside is quite red more like blood so as you can see here this color and it's quite contain quite a lot of moisture that's what your elephant likes about this tree so yeah that's it about uh, our marula tree and let's hope the elephant will stay away from it thank you i've got some beautiful flowers here since it's our summer i've got some beautiful flowers as you can see here was such a kind of orangey flower which you can make quite a very lovely collection of the flowers so this one is called um white trumpet which definitely the name they have named according to the way the flower that look like so it looked like a trumpet as you can see so that's why they call it a white trumpet quite very common in summer that you'll see you can see how beautiful it is with this um green stamp and also five flowers shape in so yeah this is quite a beautiful um uh, uh white trumpet and this one is called um Genedia rubisens which also very common in summer that we'll often see so summer definitely bring quite a lot of life in the bush if you're uh, a flower lover so this is the best time for you to be in Tanatula for the flower collection this is my right, guys we've got another um, interesting tree species which this one we call it a buffalo thorn tree or zizifasi macronata so this particular tree species is quite very interesting with the way it grows because the branch when you look at the branch it have got more like a zigzag kind as it grows and each and every zigzag will have straight thorn and a hook thorn 
and currently it's starting to flower which also they bear some fruit which birds monkeys are eatable so these are the flower that you see here it's flowering so also humans do eat on the fruit and also the leaves you can actually eat them tannin free there's no tannin on it one of the two species that you can survive if you run out of food in the food in the bush there's no bitterness with a zebra um, uh, um, giraffe likes to feed kudu impalas hmm. which is can grow anywhere which the thorns is to protect them against being over browsed by the, the by, by the browsers and local people they call it mlatabantu which means buried people's tree so they they use this tree in graveyards so the belief is with this particular tree species if there's um, a natural death it's a car accident for example or gunshot or anything that is unnatural that happened that caused the death an old member of the family will actually come and collect this bush this branch and go to the area where the incident has happened and when they get there what they do as you can see they've got all the hook thorn in the same position in the same line and all the straight thorn in the different which is one of the only species in the bush that will have two pattern of thorns which commonly you'll see some thorn have got spike two straight thorns or some have got hooked but this one have got the straight thorn and the hook thorn so when they go into the area where the incident has happened an old member of the family is going to carry the branch get into the area what they're going to do with a hook thorn pointing down they're going to sweep around the area where the accident has happened a reason for that we believe that we collect the spirit so if somebody dies away from home by a natural death we believe that their spirit are not at peace so the only way to make the spirit the, the spirit to rest is to go and collect by using the buffalo thorn tree so they're gonna take the branch into the graveyard after the burial has happened or done with the burial they're gonna put the branch on top of the grave with the hook thorn pointing down and the straight thorn pointing up by putting down the thorn facing the hook thorn facing down we believe this is the hook thorn represent the past or to keep bad spirit and the straight thorn represent looking forward to the future and to keep good spirit so the zigzag pattern that you see this is represent life the challenges that we are facing in our life which our life goes up and down like a zigzag movement so that's what it represents so a year of anniversary of the burial a new branch is gonna put on as a new resolution so if it's a husband or wife if your age still allow you to get married you're free to be married again so if it's a kid it's a kid or a baby life goes on so you can continue the other years to put flowers but with this particular branch you put it once after a year of anniversary and this tree is believed to be a lightning resistant which it can grow up to uh, uh, six 
to eight meter tall but definitely it believed that it never strike by lightning which most of the local people in the graveyards you're gonna find this tree so it believed that if somebody comes they can come and collect that branch and use that ritual to collect the spirit so that's what in our tradition uh, believes that we use this tree for and then yeah it's quite very eatable quite very handy to all uh, our press our browsers right so this is our lovely um buffalo phone tree so they've got some hooks on so be careful you can get stuck right guys we've got uh, a dwarf mangus that is sneaking out on that hole here or on that hole which that hole it used to be an old termite mount nest so now the mangoes have taken over which mangoes they've got um, alpha pair that they breed within the group and the rest of the others will take care of the uh, of the young and well known of taking down snakes which when they attack they mob the snakes in the group so yeah it's quite good to have mangoes around if you don't like snakes And also you often find them where they are foraging for food which they can eat uh, ants and also the lava from the dung beetle you find hornbills that are flying above them as they forage for food because when they forage for food they actually disturb insects grasshoppers that Drongus and and hornbills will feed on them and definitely it helps them if there will be a bed of prey in the area or any uh, kind of what like a civets even leopards that they can take uh, mangoes wild cats that they will warn the mangoes and the mangoes will run away into their um, into their holes so there's a relationship between the, 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 the hornbills and the and the drongos with the with the mangoes. Yeah, well now it's popping out. Want to see us better, have a better look. As the rest of the colony is inside the hole. Alright guys. We've got a group of male buffaloes here, which um, normally this time of the year, which when it come to our winter dry season, male buffalo, they tend to isolate themselves from the herd, hang around on their own where there's availability of food and water to save the energy for the summer to arrive so that waiting for the herd to come back which that's where they will start mating which also the herd of buffalo they do travel quite long distance in search of food and water whereby these males they isolate themselves hang around close to the water area and also like to wallow in the mud as well as you can see one of them is not comfortable you can tell with the behavior what is doing, shaking the head. And the others, they quite sit and relax as they chew, as they chew the cord. Uh, which buffalo are quite a bulk eaters, which they eat the grass. And then when they lie down and rest, that when they will start chewing the cord, because these animals are ruminant. Quite a very nice weather, it's not hot, 
So yeah, look, they are quite very comfortable. As you can see, some ox pickers coming in, where you find that symbiotic relation between the two, whereby the ox pickers, they will sit on buffalo, even giraffes, zebras, rhinos, that they feed on ticks. and enjoying the ride at the same time. So yeah, buffalo can be quite dangerous, especially when we find them on their own, which they feel quite vulnerable. So anything that they will see as a threat, they will often attack especially approaching them on foot in the vehicle they feel much more comfortable because they did they don't see any potential threat but yeah definitely on food is quite different from buffalo to elephant had a very lovely small herd good weather for elephants definitely they will eat most of the day especially with the green new grass now that we are in our summer which that's where they eat more grass than any uh, bushes or leaves and grass so now they're more into grass more than any others so elephants are quite very social animals where they live what you call a matriarchal society where they will have one big old female that will be the leader of the herd that will guide the herd to the watering hole if there will be natural resources that they can go for that particular female will be in charge and also leading them to for the water source so it's quite a very relaxed head with our presence, which they are enjoying our company. All right guys, as we have promised that we will be back after we have seen vultures coming down and then we came and see what is happening and then we find the dead giraffe. And only the vultures that was feeding earlier on. And now we're back again and the hyenas have arrived which hyenas and vultures if the animal dies from natural death will be the first to arrive in the carcass and which definitely they will eat until nothing left all the bones will be carried away As you can see, one hyena is drinking in between the meal, which is quite a good thing. The carcass is quite close to the water. Which now, as it's getting dark, all the vultures will fly and roost in around these dead trees and the hyenas will be the one that are going to continue the rest of the night.
so it's more hyenas that are arriving now. With the spotted hyenas, they do scavenge and also eat the remaining or the leftovers of the other animals like lions, which they will finish up the remaining and also well known of hunting for their own food. very social as you can see the greetings which one just arrived just now so that touching is quite common that you will see to your highness yeah morning folks it's our next morning of our sofa safari and today is quite a little bit cloudy and the rain where we have got a little bit of rain so yeah let's enjoy the smell of the bush after rain so beautiful so yeah we're gonna go out and see what we can do and bring you sofa safari into your doorstep my name is civilized all right guys we've got um, some impalas here which this time of the year is our new season where we are welcoming the newborn baby in Paris. So this is the beginning of the season whereby in the next few weeks to come we're gonna have a lot of baby in Paris that are getting birth and during that period they will flood the market each and every herd that you're gonna find that will be baby impalas and with with impalas they breed every year which in general all the antelopes will have this long gestation period whereby their babies are born fully developed so they can follow their mothers soon after birth which that is their um, surviving strategy. All right, guys, as we started this morning and then it was raining and then it continued raining. And then we coming to the end of our morning safari and the end of our episode. I hope you did enjoy it. And then, yeah, see you next time. Thank you. I hope you're going to enjoy it. Eh?